In Creel Parametric, you can use design constraints as part of your design criteria in topology optimization to represent different manufacturing methods. Let's take a look at the differences. Here I am in Creole Parametric. I've got a part model open with a bunch of different bodies. Let's hop over to Generative Design. I'll go to the Applications menu. Here we have the command. And I've already set up this model for the topology optimization. I have designated my starting geometry. I've also done my preserved geometry and excluded geometry. Just give you a little bit of background on this scenario. I am designing the support for a turbo shaft that's going through the location. So everything is set up with my constraints and loads. I've also got some contacts in here, but I want to establish the design constraints for my manufacturing method. I'm going to click on the design criteria that's already set up and then use the edit definition command. And right now our design goal is to limit the volume to 30%. Also, I've got a material assigned. Here it is steel. Let's say I want to change it to one of my other materials. I can activate it. And then here we have the design constraints area. If I click on the drop down list, you have your manufacturing constraints and your geometric constraints. In another video, I will cover the geometric constraints. I'm actually going to add one right now for planar symmetry. My geometry is symmetric. My loads and constraints are symmetric. Hey, I want to make sure that the resulting geometry will be symmetric as well. So let's choose planar symmetry. I'm going to turn on my datum plane display for a moment. And I want to make sure that my resulting part ends up being symmetric about the datum plane called right and also the datum plane called front. So there is one design constraint, but let's go to the add constraints. Here we have our three different manufacturing constraints. The first one is for build direction. And you use build direction in a situation in which you're going to use 3D printing. There are two different things that you specify. First, we have the build direction, and that's the direction that you're going to 3D print this part. And so for the build direction, I'm going to use the datum plane called front in this situation. It's not exactly perfect, but it is good enough. Let me unclutter my screen by turning off the planes. We also have the critical angle. The critical angle is the maximum angle with respect to the print direction where you do not need any supports for the printing. So that's good for the build direction design constraint. Let me click the OK button to complete out of here. And I'm going to hit the optimize button so that we can see the end result. It's going to take about a minute. I'm going to run that in fast motion and then we'll see what the resulting geometry looks like. The optimization completed in about 53 seconds. I really like the geometry that the topology optimization came up with in this situation. But let's take a look at the other two manufacturing methods. So let me once again left click on design criteria, edit definition. I'll use the X to get rid of the existing manufacturing constraint. And then from the drop down, let's choose parting line. And you can probably infer from parting line that this is used for casting or forging a part. And so we have our pull direction for removing the casting from the core and cavity. So for the pull direction in this situation, I'm going to use the datum plane top. Let me just pick it right out of the model tree. And yeah, this part really wouldn't lend itself great to forging or casting, but let's see what it is going to look like. Then we have the draft angle. That's the angle between the walls of the mold plate. And then you have this option here for the draft line, whether it should be 2D or 3D. And 3D is selected by default. So if you have 2D selected, that means that the parting line for your mold has to lie on a plane. But if you use the 3D option instead, like I'm doing, then the parting line will not be restricted to lying on a plane. So that's good for the design constraint. Let's click the OK button. 
And you'll notice that the preview of the topology optimization went away, seeing as we changed our design criteria. So now let's click on the optimize button. This one will take a bit longer to run, about three minutes. Hey, I'll come back in a few seconds. All right, you can see that this one took about three and a quarter minutes to complete. I don't like this geometry as well. Look at those weird sort of flanges that you have in there. Again, this scenario really doesn't lend itself to being a casted or forged part. So anyhow, there you see what you end up getting with the different manufacturing method. Let's try the third one. I will click on design criteria. Let's edit definition once more. Let's click the X for pull direction. Oh yeah, one thing that I want to mention, you can actually use multiple criteria, multiple design constraints, but you cannot use the parting line with the linear extrude. Hey, those are conflicting with one another. But let's click the X. Let's go to add constraints. Here we have linear extrude and this is what you would use if you intend to use two or three axis milling in order to create the part. Here we have the extrude direction. Hey, that is the direction of the tool that's going to be used for milling in this particular situation. Let me use the datum plane called front, which I will pick right out of the model tree. Then we have our extrude angle. And so that's the angle uh, between 0 and 45 degrees for the angle of the linear pole. Then we have this option here for bidirectional. And bidirectional is when the part is going to be flat on both sides. In other words, you're going to use two axis milling, but I'm going to turn this off so that it will be unidirectional, which means that we're just having the part be flat on one side. This is what you would use for three axis milling. So this is good. Let's click the OK button. Once again, the preview goes away because we changed our design criteria. Let's run this one. This one will take uh, just over a minute to run. So there you have it. Different manufacturing method, different resulting geometry. That's how you can use design criteria in order to specify the manufacturing method for your topology optimization. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.